Hey everybody, this is Brendan here with Common Motor. It's common-motor.com on the internet. And today, we're gonna to be installing our Shockwave electronic ignition system on a CB175. Now, our ignition system will fit CL175s, SL175s, CB200s, and CL200s. Stay tuned for all the details on how to put the system in place. The Parts Center where parts for all Honda products are stocked. Each and every spare part for the dozens of Honda products are ready here for immediate shipment anywhere in the world. Before starting your shockwave installation, it's important to know that it is compatible with the stock ignition system coil with a resistance of 3.5 ohms minimum. Second, the stock regulator and rectifier are prone to failure and can send voltage spikes through the ignition system that will damage your shockwave. To retain our 12-month warranty, you will need to install our part number 3023 common motor regulator rectifier combo unit. Refer to our part number 3023 installation video to learn how to install this. This shockwave electronic ignition is compatible with the CB175, CL175, SL175, CB200, and CL200 family and motorcycles. To start your installation, there's a few things to remove. First, disconnect the negative side of the battery. Drain the fuel lines so you can disconnect them and remove the gas tank. And remove the spark plugs. Disconnect the points wires. Remove the points plate. Loosen the engine stud that contains the ignition condenser. Disconnect it and remove it. Replace it with the included hardened M8 washer and retorque the engine stud according to the specifications in your service manual. Remove the key switch and horn brackets. Remove the stator cover. Be sure when you do this to have your motorcycle on its center stand and an oil catch container to catch any excess oil that might drain out of your engine. Lastly, loosen the bolts on the end of your camshaft and remove the mechanical advance unit so you can clean and lubricate it. Refer to our mechanical advance rebuild video linked in the upper right hand corner as well as down below in the description. When you reinstall the mechanical advance, leave the washer and bolt off for the shockwave installation. Mark the front cam of your mechanical advance with a sharpie to show the two high spots in the cam. These usually fall in line with the end of the mechanical advance weights on the CB175 and CB200 family of motorcycles. In your shockwave you will receive one module. These can come as either blue or green, but they are both identical. To assemble your module bracket, first insert the small module bracket bolts through the four holes on the module mounting plate and into each standoff. The standoffs are mounted on the side of the bracket without the engraving. Be sure to use blue Loctite on the bolts to ensure that they will not vibrate loose later. Insert your module into the four standoffs. The wires will face the side with the longer mounting slot and the LED will face the side with the shorter slot. Place the module retaining plate on top and insert the final four module bracket bolts into the standoff with blue Loctite to bolt the module retaining plate on. Insert your red and center wire. The center wire again can be either green or blue depending on the color of the module and center you received into one of the long 11 inch heat shrink pieces and heat shrink them together using a heat gun or a lighter. Insert the other long 11 inch heat shrink piece over the white wire and heat shrink it as well. When installing your module assembly onto your Honda, be sure to follow the mounting order for the included nuts and bolts on screen and in your installation instructions. What this does is properly space your ignition switch, module assembly, and horn so they can be installed without contacting each other. Be sure to install the black wire from your module assembly onto one of the bolts to properly ground your shockwave unit.
In your shockwave, you will receive one sensor. These can be either blue or green, but they are both identical. Insert the sensor support spacer into the sensor body and use the supplied sensor bolt to temporarily bolt the sensor to the sensor plate. This spacer is necessary to keep the sensor from moving and changing the timing on you, so be sure to install it. Run the sensor wire down to the machine hole in your sensor plate and use the included small zip tie to zip tie the sensor wire onto the face of your sensor plate. Then loop the wire up and behind itself as demonstrated to create a cable strain relief that will keep the sensor wire out of the way of the points chamber. When doing this, be sure to leave a small amount of slack in the sensor cable. Slide the new cable dust grommet included in your shockwave onto the thermal sleeving. Cut your short heat shrink piece into two pieces and slip the first half over your sensor wire. Next, slide the included thermal shield over the sensor wire and tuck it into the end of the small piece of heat shrink you just put on. Heat shrink it with a heat gun or lighter to keep the ends of the thermal shield from fraying. Slide the second half of the small heat shrink onto the back of the thermal shield and heat shrink it to seal the thermal shielding. Loosely install your points plate into the points chamber with the supplied bolts. Align the plate index line so that they are perpendicular to the ground. Push the cable dust grommet into the indention in your engine housing. To wire your shockwave, first route the heat shrink bundle that contains the red wire and the sensor wire, which can be either green or blue up and over the key switch bracket and next to the main harness portion of the black wire with white stripe. Unscrew the posi tap and place the cap over the black wire with white stripe. Screw the posi tap into the cap to pierce and tap into that wire. To connect the red wire, strip a quarter inch off the wire, insert the red wire into the other end of the posi tap and begin to thread in the wire into the posi tap. Keep constant pressure applied to the posi tap while screwing in the end to make a solid connection. To connect the sensor wire, strip a quarter inch off of both the wire coming from the sensor and the wire coming from the module. These wires can be either green or blue. Use the red posi lock to connect the two wires by unscrewing the caps at each end, slipping them over the ends of both wires and threading both back into the posi lock while applying a constant pressure to the wire for a firm connection. Route the white wire up and over through the cutout in the frame so it's next to your ignition coil. If you are using your posi lock connectors, cut the male bullet in off of the ignition coil. Strip a quarter inch off the coil wire and the white wire coming from the shockwave module and connect it with the posi lock. Now that your shockwave is installed, reconnect the negative side of your battery. Rotate your engine counterclockwise so that one of the two high points of your mechanical advance cam that we marked earlier with the Sharpie is facing the center of the shockwave sensor. Remove the sensor bolt, apply blue Loctite and screw it back on loosely. Be careful to not let the sensor support spacer fall out. Blue Loctite has a working time of 20 minutes before it hardens. Adjust the sensor so that there is a 10 thou gap or 0.3 millimeter gap using a feeler gauge between the sensor and the high point of the mechanical advance cam. Once set, tighten the sensor bolt fully. It's now time to turn on your motorcycle. Once turned on, you will find the LED on the module will be on. To check your ignition timing, rotate your engine counterclockwise until the LED turns off. Your goal is to have the LED on the module turn off the instant the F mark on the stator rotor lines up with the index mark on the stator. If it is off, loosen the sensor plate bolts and rotate the plate to adjust timing. Moving it clockwise advances the timing, moving it counterclockwise retards the timing. 
Once timed, tighten the center plate bolts and rotate the engine counterclockwise one full revolution. If it's off, adjust it again. Be sure when you're doing this to keep the motorcycle power turned off when you're making any adjustments to prevent overheating of the coil and shockwave electronic components. Once the timing is set, reinstall and tighten the washer and bolt for the mechanical advance to the camshaft. Reinstall the spark plugs, gas tank, stator cover, and points cover. You're now ready to start the motorcycle and take it for a test ride. If you're needing technical support or have questions about your Shockwave electronic ignition system, contact us. You can reach us via email using the help icon at common-motor.com or schedule a technical support phone call by going to the bottom of our contact us page at common-motor.com and scheduling the time slot for us to call you. This concludes the Shockwave electronic ignition installation on this CB175. Remember that it also fits the CL175, SL175, CB200, and CL200 bikes all in the same family there. Also, as a reminder, make sure you upgrade your regulator rectifier to our part number 3023, the combo reg rec unit, as the original separate regulator rectifier can cause a voltage spike to the shock wave and cook electronic components in there. So make sure you upgrade that part, which you probably should do anyway, because it's a really good upgrade on all of these bikes. It also extends the warranty of the Shockwave for a full year. Hope you enjoy the Shockwave on your bike. You're going to find that it runs a lot better, a lot smoother at idle, and more consistent all the way across the RPM range. We've had great success with it in the other twins, and we're super happy to have it now available for the 175 and 200 family bikes. This is Brennan with Common Motor. Thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Subscribe to our newsletter via our website and subscribe to this YouTube channel down below and we'll see you next time.